Okay, so now we know how to collect data with analog read, and we can display it down here on our serial monitor. Um, what we really want to be able to do now is uh, to be able to display that, for example, on these LEDs. It'd be cool to have a bar graph. And, uh, you know, you could probably think of some ways. We haven't gotten into if statements and, and what else. We will shortly, but maybe I could create ifs. So if it's greater than, say, 200, then this one lights up. And if it's greater than 400, then that one lights up. And, and what else? Um, you know, that would, that would work. Um, but we could also just try to do some math. So we could say, well, what would really be nice is to somehow scale these values. So if it's extremely dark, it's 969. If it's extremely bright, it's around 50. We could try to scale those values so that it's between 2 and 9. Okay. Uh, which wouldn't be too hard. I mean, 50. If we want 50 to basically be equal to 2, uh, well, let's see, we can, we can use a calculator to do that. So that would be, uh, that would be 2 divided by 50. And we would find out that's uh, 0.04. Okay, so if I multiplied 50 by 0.04, it would be 2, which would then potentially light up that one. And let's see what happens if we multiply that by 969. And it's like, oh, 38. Hmm. Okay, well, that doesn't quite work. So there's not a simple math formula that we can use. So then we have to start getting into more advanced math. But fortunately, we don't have to. Uh, Arduino's already got something built in called map. And it's going to take the values from a variable. For example, we called our variable photoval. And we can take photoval and map it between 49 and 969 and make it fit any scale that we want okay so let's do it real quick uh, already I've created a variable here I'm going to go ahead and call it pval which is going to be the map value from the photoresistor and it's exactly like I just said so let's take pval let's see For some reason my keyboard didn't work Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, you have to stop simulation. There we go. So let's go ahead and take, here's our photo valve. That's the one we just got from our sensor. And let's go ahead and convert that into p -val, okay, which is going to be our mapped value. And it's going to be equal to map of, all right, so what we want to map is we want to map photo valve. And we want to go ahead and put a comma here. And we want to map it from its lowest point to its highest point. Well, its lowest point, if I recall, was about 49. And its highest point was, or is, 969. Okay. And we want to fit it into our lowest hopeful value, which is 2. And we're going to make it go up into its highest value that we want out, which is 9. Okay. So now we've already taken and we have scaled PVAL so that it fits between 49 and 969. And let's go ahead and print it. We'll print it right here. Uh, we'll make it PVAL. And actually we should go ahead and make this a little bit nicer, shouldn't we? Let's go ahead and put in here. This is the, uh, the photo value is equal to remember this from the last video we just did or the one on section five okay so we can concatenate a string and let me do this here and this is going to be the map value is equal to the string of pval. All right. So actually, if we load this right now, we should get the data gathered and the print value. So let's take a look at it real quick and see if it, oops, sorry. Obviously, I've done something wrong. Hold on one second. Uh, I don't have enough parentheses. Okay, let's try that. 
and we'll open our serial monitor and you can see first there's our photo value and our map value and it goes from 9 if we bring this down I'm hoping it goes all the way down to 2 okay and we can probably get the values in between by simply sliding it up well it's a little bit uh, top heavy isn't it but it does okay now we're at 5 and we could take it right back up to 9 alright excellent so now let's display that on our graph so we've now fit it so it fits between 2 and 9 and actually, I'm going to just copy and paste a hunk of code here because uh, I'm running out of time. I don't want to make these videos too long. I've created the shell of the function already. Just stop the simulation. Okay. And all I'm going to literally do is turn on PVAL, which is, of course, the map value. We're going to turn on the LED. We're going to hold it there. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer because you won't see it when the video flashes. Let's make it 200. Okay, and then we're going to turn it off, and it should just repeat itself over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and start the simulation this time. And it might be hard to see, but the light is flashing. And if I scroll this down a little bit, it should flash up. See, it goes down, so now we have this one. Bring it up a little bit, and we should get it to raise up. Boy, this is not the most wonderful response it's really heavy on the top there okay but it in fact works all right it's going to work much better in the real world by the way so let's actually go ahead and do that let's move it to the real world let me stop this and all i need to do is copy this and we haven't built anything different on our circuit so it should go pretty quick i'm going to control a control v and now I've taken this exact piece of code that we wrote there, and we're going to put it over here. Now, notice, if I load this, it probably won't work very well. Because in the real world, we have to adjust those values. Because remember, this 49 and, and 969, that may be very, very different than what actually happens with our real circuit. So let's display the data. Pull that up, and you can see... That in this case, if I have it in total darkness, we get about 610. And if I turn on my flashlight, just one moment, and expose it to lots of light, we get on to 55 or 50 ish. So, what we really want to do is we want to go from 50 to 690 or 680 so let me change that 680 load it up and we should get a better response so I'll move this down so we can actually see it okay and you can see now that as I change the intensity as my hand gets closer and closer it goes up the scale. And remember last video I said, oh, isn't it nice if we could just sort of remove this so it moves much faster? Because remember, this is printing a delay. So we're just going to comment that out, and we'll probably get a much better response. Okay. So there you go. We've made a light meter. And let me show you this. Notice how right now, I have it so that the darkness is, is uh, the high value. Actually, what is that high value? We should try to change that. Oh, that number. Oh, wait, I commented it out. Um, let me bring it back. Because I think we want to change this a little bit. Yes, clearly it's actually higher. It's about 750. So let me take that up to 750. And I'll comment that out again and load it up. There, now we got a pretty nice scale. Uh, I still can't get it all the way up. There, there we go. But I gotta get super dark to get it to go that high. Okay, so that works great. Now let me show you this. Let's say I wanted to go the other way. Let's say I wanted it to be when it's dark, it's green, and when it's um, bright, it's red. Well, I can simply take and flip this 
make this a 9. So now we're going to go from low to high and then high to low. So if I make this a 2, it's going to be the same thing, but it's just going to flip it. So now we're going to rescale it so that darkness goes green. Okay, cool. That's all I want to say on this video, so I'm going to wrap this up, and I will see you all again real soon.